I'll start. <laughs> Eight visit network, check. Woohoo! Yes, yes, check. All right, announcements. Yeah, so here we go. Yeah, so I'm Paul Balog. I am now, I took over from Sabri Blackman. I don't know if anybody knew him from before. Um, he's kind of the uh, local, or was I should say, local CNCF ambassador. Um, he's no longer, uh, I think he's going to be giving that up. And I don't know, he's, I think he's wanting to throw it my way as well as the Cube uh, Cloud Native STL group. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's see. Let me watch it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I'm a consummate professional, as you can tell, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so with Sabri's departure, I'm going to try to uh, pick this up and keep it going and hopefully have a regular monthly session. I think at least for Kubernetes and Cloud Native, I feel like the, uh, the playing field is a lot bigger than the Go meetup group gets as far as speakers go, because we can just kind of talk about all the different products and yeah, we're going to have, hopefully Jess will be uh, presenting to us here maybe uh, next month or two months or we'll see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if anybody is interested, um, you know, in co-organizing or something or helping out or whatever, it's uh, not difficult. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, so because we are part of CNCF, essentially, I mean, they're covering all the hosting fees for Meetup. Um, you know, just want to point out that we go by their code of conduct. So just everybody be excellent to each other and everybody's good. Um, yeah, facilities, thanks to CIC, you know, here at Cortex, um, they are just, uh, you know, full disclosure, they're, they're letting us use the, uh, the premises and everything, but uh, they're hoping that I get traffic into the facilities for co-working or whatever and then hopefully that will get it where we can either hopefully get free use of the space for our meetups in the future still or, or at least reduced rate and for some of the bigger rooms and that so thanks to them and then Grafana Labs uh, is picking up the food for today so so yay um, but yeah so with the CIC if you guys have anybody that uh, wants co-working space or whatever you would just yeah tell them I told you and then uh, yeah we can hopefully get to use this continuing for free um, and again I'm I'm also the organizer for the st. Louis go meetup group so I've kind of set things up already over the two plus years that I was uh, organizing that so feel free to you know follow the STL go meetup on Twitter uh, like I said mentioned earlier we have a YouTube channel I'll put this video up there after I post edit and all that good stuff so uh, feel free to use that um, you know Kubernetes cloud native and St. Louis go are kind of anyway uh, tight-knit group um, news obviously KubeCon is next week we'll which I'm going news. oh you have some news too yes yes so um, if you're at KubeCon or if you're not um, the day before the Tuesday I think, or maybe it's Monday. Anyway, there's an open telemetry meetup, so if you're into observability generally, there's a Hotel Unplugged Day, which is not through the CNCF, because all the CNCF ones are $400. This one's $25 <laughs> in person or free for virtual. What? Yeah, yeah, and there'll be like breakouts, and so if you want to learn about open, open telemetry. Time. It's like adjacent to KubeCon, but it's not part of KubeCon. Yeah, it's not one of those pre-events or whatever. It's Honeycomb and Splunk and Datadog and a couple other um, observability. Oh, cool. Where did I get that? Oh, great. Uh, um, I can send it to you, or you can Google Hotel Unplugged. Oh, okay, Hotel, hotel it's, Unplugged. It's hard because it really wants to Google Hotel Unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, spell check or type. <laughs> it's hotel unplugged, yeah. and uh, you can find that blog post. Um, and then okay. there's a there's a Eventbrite, and yeah, it's free virtually. Cool. Yay. Ooh, thank you, thank you. That's a. Uh, I'll have to check that out because I know uh, there's yeah, right. a. Uh, Those tins of hotel. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, thank you for being so helpful. Right. 
But uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll, I'll be there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out because uh, I know I was uh, looking at this website for like all the uh, KubeCon parties and stuff too. And apparently that's a very big thing. So last time I went to KubeCon, I guess I wasn't one of the cool kids. So I didn't really know about all those parties. So uh, yeah, maybe this year. This year will be my year. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know. Anybody, uh, well... This was perfect. I mean, you know, the hotel. Um, anything else going on? Uh, fun stuff. Uh, people looking for jobs or anything. <laughs> uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, reviving one of the other St. Louis meetups. So maybe we can talk. Is about it STL it. Rust? It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny because yeah, um, it's uh, Jordan. I think is uh, he's the organizer for it. And I did actually ping him. Um, I haven't gotten a response, though. He's usually good about responding, so I'll ping him again. And then, uh, But yeah, I was thinking about maybe uh, picking that one up as well, just kind of being a whole, you know, maybe. So my Twitter handle is Java Ducky, so I'll be like, you know, Java Ducky <laughs> LLC or something, and I'm just an event coordinator or something. But, uh, you know. It's, yeah, it was, like I was saying to someone yeah. earlier, I really like how the meetups are coming back together in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, yeah. But I could uh, step up and try to help make that grow. So. Yep, yep. No, definitely, because that was, that was one of them, because I used to go to that one as well. And mm -hmm. I don't know how to program anything in Rust, uh, but uh, <laughs> yep. it's like it's on my list. It's like, yeah, I want to do that someday, someday. I've got an idea for a talk. I'll talk with you afterwards. Perfect. Yay. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll get with Jordan and uh, um, see what we can do. But yeah, so here, our main speaker. That's me. So, um, yeah, so for funsies, I had to put myself in there for the, uh, the slides. Like I said, I'm reusing everything from the Go meetup. So. <laughs> All right. so let me go ahead and switch over, put on my other hat. Um, yeah, separate presentation. So this is the fun, uh, yeah, fun fact with this one too, is that uh, y'all are my my preview, my uh, my test run of this or uh, this whole demonstration and talk. Uh, in November, I'm actually doing one of the CNCF webinars, so hitting the big leagues with that one, and I'm going to be presenting this topic. Uh, you know, running distributed load tests with K6. Um, so again, me, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm a developer advocated Grafana Labs, but I'm specifically on the K6 project and even more specifically OSS. I, I do not push our cloud offering, um, none of it. I'll tell you how to get, for the low, low price of free, how to use all that stuff. So, but yeah. There we go. All right. So I just wanted to point out that, uh, you know, Raj Dutt, who's the CEO from Grafana, so June 21, they acquired K6. And then it was just because with the two companies, it's a good match. I mean, it's a perfect fit. And with both of us, you know, our big thing is open source software is in our DNA. So it's like uh, we are very big into the open source uh, area. All our products are available for free. So start off with the, uh, the I don't know, I, I don't want to say sales pitch because it's not a sales pitch, but uh, yeah, so what is K6, all right? Now, this is the new thing and this is the most important slide in this whole deck is that we are a reliability testing tool. Most people know us as a load testing tool, which that's really what we're most known for. You know, that's what we kind of got our start. I mean, way back, so uh, K6 started off as a gaming company out of Sweden. Um, I'm uh, bl drawing a blank on the original company's name, but then they switched, it became Load Impact. So you may have heard that, and then uh, around 2016, I think, or 17, is when they rewrote everything in Go, and then they switched over to the name of K6. And then uh, again, 21 is when we were acquired by uh, Grafana Labs. So, you know, 
now that we've, we've gone through that whole, we're not just a load test tool, we are a reliability testing tool, this provides all these, it's an umbrella term for all these other types of testing. So we kind of spoke earlier um, that uh, you can do contract testing. We're not known for that, but you can do it. And it's not really a product type thing. We don't really push that. You know, chaos testing, you can do that. We have tools where you can hook in Kubernetes and then you can do things like, you know, kill a random pod or, uh, you know, inject a, you know, change a secret or whatever. You can do any of that stuff. It, Really, it's just a wrapper around cube cuddle. And I hope everyone says cube cuddle, right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, so integration testing, you know, of course, load testing. And then this is another one that people don't really know about either is that you can do browser testing. So you can actually control like, you know, a headless Chrome browser and, and actually go and, you know, hit your website just like you would do with, uh, was it Selenium? So, but yeah, so not just the load testing tool. We're, we, we, you know, really push that we're totally in the whole reliability sense of the thing. So yeah, ThoughtWorks in 21, they, you know, put this nice thing and they were referring to the OSS. You know, I just thought I'd throw that in there for, uh, you know, nice little uh, clout there. But uh, anyway, but yeah, so, Reliability, so our big things, we're open source, and then we're scriptable, because we want you to take our K6 binary and include it into your CI CD pipeline. So you can do things where you can have a pass fail scenario, so that if, uh, say, you know, you define a threshold to say that, okay, 95% have to be lower than 500 millisecond response times. And if it exceeds that, then that will stop your build, you know, if you script it that way, that'll stop your build and then, uh, you know, you don't proceed, you don't pass go. Uh, we're performant, we're written completely in Go. Now the test scripts themselves are written in JavaScript because that's one of the things is, so we're primarily focused on developers to do shift left more in, you know, do your testing up front but then we use JavaScript because it's kind of a more of a common denominator, lowest common denominator. Because then that way then you can have your quality engineers that maybe don't know, you know, obviously probably don't know Go. Um, they can write all this stuff in JavaScript and then actually have it launched this way. And the extensibility for K6. Now this is where I actually focus on the most. So this is where we kind of reach out to Go developers out in the community to add support for new types of integrations. So, you know, maybe we want to push out, uh, you know, trace tests to Honeycomb. You know, maybe, uh, you know, we have something like, you know, pushing out our metrics out to Prometheus, which now with Grafana um, being our kind of our, our parent, that's going to become the default. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it hadn't been in the past. So right now in the demo, I'll be showing with, uh, with an extension where we're gonna push out to Prometheus. But these are, these are some of the big things that we're really proud of in this. And now my, my little, something I'm really proud of. That was my concept on the little, little gopher guy climbing the mountain. And then our, uh, our team uh, actually ran with it nicely. But uh, yeah, so again, we, we take JavaScripts. That's what your test scripts are written in. It's going to go into a JavaScript runtime that's actually a Go implementation. This Goja project, which is an open source project. And then it can go through the extensions. Doesn't have to. And then uh, it's all based on Go. So it is nice and fast. So now we'll just kind of go over a little bit of a brief thing about what just load testing in general. And now, yeah, so <laughs> load testing. <laughs> and it's very true, the knower of all things. You know, it is, it's, it's about putting demands on the system to measure its response. We're not trying to blow something up necessarily. You can if you really want to, but we're just trying to push it to its limits just to see where that limit really is. Because, I mean, you might be doing this in production. You don't want to destroy your production system. 
So, some of the myths about load testing. So, performance testing is not necessarily the exact same thing as load testing. Performance testing, similar to reliability testing, it's that umbrella term. And then you're going to have many of these things underneath of that. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of places think that, uh, you know, load tests, it's only for big companies. It's not really true. That's, anybody can use that because, you know, again, it's not expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can make it expensive. <laughs> you know, if you want to say, and I have to have an identical production system that I'm going to be testing every time, you can make it expensive. You know, but you don't have to do that. Um, and then that, uh, yeah, it should only be done in production. Uh, you, you know, again, you don't have to do that. You can, you can tune things down a little bit and simulate the higher load too. Uh, and then, yeah, that if you have your observability, and I'm assuming everybody knows Ollie, uh, the, the <laughs> that's observability. Um, it just didn't fit observability all spelled out. So it's like, okay, I gotta use that. But then it's like, okay, is it one of those things where somebody doesn't know the acronym? Because I really have to be concerned with that because most of the folks that I actually work with are in Europe. And so some of the acronyms may not go with them. They may not know what I'm talking about. So anyway, but yeah. So even with observability tooling, you still should do load testing. Um, okay, now here's where we're going to get into some of these funny slides where I pulled them in because it was like, yeah, that's great. That looks good. Um, but uh, yeah, what do, I what do I say about this? I mean, this is just showing that, uh, you know, really your user experience, you know, how it changes over, over time as the, uh, your system slows down from the number of concurrent users going up. So just the, the nice little hockey so stick. So when you talk about reliability testing, yeah. you mentioned earlier you were, uh, the point was to find how far you can push your system. Right. Are you looking for that? It's like where that is that, yeah. that crazy yeah. spot right there where all of a sudden that's going to be the hockey stick where that's, that's your limit. Yeah, that's where it's like, okay, how are we going to address that? Do we want to go past that? What are we going to have to do? Are we going to have to, you know... Um, get bigger EC2 instances, uh, you know, go to the uh, extra, extra large, uh, you know, that type of thing. That's where you need to make those decisions. And then, yeah, so the load. EC2 is a, a AWS? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's the. Uh... All right, and then so that was odd. Well, okay. Never mind. All right, so as I was saying, the user experience, as you ramp up typically your usage and concurrent users, sometimes you get to a point at this hockey stick where all of a sudden you're, you fall off a cliff with your performance, your response times increase and in that. And with K6, that's something that we try to find is that point, that breaking point. So now when we talk about some of these things, we define that we want to define our service level objectives. That's our SLOs. These are the things that we're gonna try to make sure that we're always hitting at, at any time. This is where we're saying, you know, oh, our service is gonna be up for five nines, that type of a thing. So this is the, and from that you have, uh, you create a your observability system. You'll create things like uh, service level indicators, which are the actual tracking metrics for each of these objectives. Now, common tests, there's several types of load tests. I, there's no one single best fit. But uh, your typical uh, tests are the average and peak test where you just maintain your current status uh, in your production systems. And you make sure that you're going to handle that typical uh, throughput. You can create as in the upper right quadrant here, the uh, spike test where you have that, that door buster scenario where all of a sudden you're going to get a giant spike in activity and you make sure that you can handle that. The soak test, if you notice here in this particular example, we have it set as being over eight hours. This is something where you're going to run for a long duration and this is going to catch things typically like, uh, you know, memory leaks or poor usage 
uh, poor resource utilization, things like uh, not returning database connections to a pool, let's say. Uh, and then with your breakpoint test, this is where you're inching forward, trying to find that elbow in the hockey stick where all of a sudden things start breaking. So in this case, we're using that to continuously hit a plateau, make sure everything's good, then hit another plateau, make sure everything's good until we reach that, that breaking point. Now, with K6, we use executors to actually create the shape of those, those patterns. Now, I won't go into, each of the, into the details of each one of these executors, but these are used directly in your scripts. Now, if you notice here on the right side, where we have two different scenarios using different executors, well, you can create layers of activity so that you can create some noise in the background, perhaps, uh, some basic activity that's going on while the actual, uh, the next level is your APIs that you're testing. It's uh, lots of options. So now introducing the K6 operator. So now all that before was typically used single binary uh, on a single desktop. Someone, you know, a QA tester or a developer, they're running the test directly from their machine or within the CDI CD pipeline. It could be the build process. Now with K6 operator, we can do distributed tests. So we can have these being run from within a Kubernetes cluster. Now, the key note to realize is that there's no changes to your test scripts. So you can actually do your development of test scripts on a single instance, verifying, making sure everything with the script is working correctly. And then you can take that script and run it in a distributed manner in Kubernetes. It's, uh, there's no modifications, it's the same script. The only thing that changes is the way that you issue the command to start the test. Now, in this case here, I'm, we're kind of showing how the distributed uh, applications will look. So in this case, we have four different uh, workers in your Kubernetes cluster. Each one happens to have two pods that would be running for a single test. So in this case, we're running a test on eight pods. And these all will aggregate their uh, metrics into a single location. And that way then you can view them from a single pane of glass. Uh, this particular slide here just shows how each of the pods are going to react so, or work. They're going to be started up, the scripts are going to be injected in, uh, any environment variables will then override values inside the scripts, and then any particular CLI flags that are being included will override that. So with that, let's have the fun. Let's go into the demo. So let me go ahead and switch over here. Now, myself, uh, I'm quite a fan of uh, GoLand, the, uh, the, the application development environment. So I'll be running this scenario in that. And I do want to point out that the demo K6 operator uh, project is available on my GitHub. I'll include the link on the, at the end. So we'll go ahead and we'll go through this, this scenario. Now, just for a little background on how this is going to work, is that uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a Kubernetes cluster that's going to be running in Docker on my local machine. Now this is going to be using uh, K3D, which will actually spin up multiple instances of K3S as each worker node. So I'll have an, a true cluster, but it'll all be in Docker. I'm gonna use a product called K9S to be able to visualize the uh, activity in the Kubernetes cluster. And then what we're going to do is we're going to submit some tests and then have those actually emit metrics while the test is running up to a Prometheus server that I have in my free forever Grafana Cloud account. So no subscription truly necessary. So let's go ahead and start with this. Now I've already done a couple of the initial pieces here with, I've already pulled down the code for both the operator as well as the XK6 output Prometheus remote extension for K6. Now at this time, uh, outputting uh, metrics to Prometheus does require having a, this extension compiled into your K6. So it's, uh, 
all explained there. So now I'll go ahead. I'm going to grow, go ahead and build my K6 image. And this will just be in Docker. So it's already built. So what this has done is actually, if we look at this Docker file that it's using, I have a build stage as well as the uh, final assembly part. But uh, I'm using the XK6 utility that uh, provided by K6. And that will recreate a new K6 binary, which includes any additional extensions that I'd like to include. Okay, and now I will go ahead and go here and I will go ahead and take this and I will push this Docker image up to my Docker Hub repository. Now it's already there, so there were, looks like there were no updates. So I'm still running the same one. Now it's important for Kubernetes that it be able to pull the image. So obviously in my case, I'm uh, running on my local machine. So I have a public repository in my Docker Hub, publicly accessible, so that way then my Kubernetes can pull the image into the namespace and actually execute pods. All right, so real quick though, just to show, I want to do this here. I want to, I'm going to actually run from the image a, a standard K6 operation. Now I'm doing this in Docker so that uh, I'm not actually running the direct binary myself. You'll see this output here is what you would normally see when you're running Kubernetes. Or, I'm sorry, when you're running doc, or, uh, K6 locally. The output will be a simple uh, table here, tabular format of all the results. So we'll see in this case, I actually ran a script, this uh, simple K6 script which has, uh, it'll simulate 10 virtual users running for 10 seconds. And this function here in JavaScript is what's going to be executed. And now in this case, it's going to hit this endpoint as many times as possible within the 10 second uh, period. So now if we look at the results, we'll see that there were 2,563 iterations on that particular Ca uh, test case, so we, we hit the site 2,500 times. And we'll see that uh, here as well that there were zero failures. So we were completely successful. Everything was, was hit. So that's the normal, uh, I guess, uh, usage or how you would normally see, interact with K6. So now I'm going to use the create a K3D cluster. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to copy this command here and let me switch over to a different uh, terminal here. Okay, so I'm going to actually create the cluster. So this is going to start up and again, these are K3S instances that will start up. There's three agents, so it's a three cluster, uh, three node cluster. Okay, and once this starts up, we'll be able to pop into K9S, which is just a nice uh, convenience over just direct uh, kubectl commands. So we'll go in here, K9S, and then we'll see that here, this is our, all the pods currently in the system. And we're still starting up, it looks like. So Helm is running, we have the core DNS running. There we go, traffic is running there. Okay, so if I go ahead and switch here to namespaces, we'll see that these are the, these four namespaces exist in this cluster. And let's go. All right, so next, let's go ahead and install the actual K6 operator. Now we can do a real quick check here just to show that I can search for the resource type of K6 and then we'll see with this error, it just means that the system doesn't know of a K6 resource. There is no existing thing. And that's simply because we haven't run the installation process with the operator. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. And let me clear that there. And then now this is doing the make file. And as you see now, all these different resources have been created. So we have installed the operator into this cluster. So let's pop in the here. And now if we notice here too, that we have an additional namespace, we have the K6 operator system. So that's 
That's a good sign. And now if I do a search again for K6, you'll see that here this resource has been found in the API. We enter into it and there just happens to be no instances of it. So this K6 shows that we're looking for those types. So that is all installed and we're ready to go with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a unique and isolated namespace for our demo. So I have the command here to create the namespace. Okay, we have that created. And now the next piece here is I'm going to create a config map that contains all our test scripts. So looking at the project files here, this test scripts directory, this includes all the different uh, uh, test scripts that I've added. And these are just simple. They can be run by, uh, you know, K6 outside of the Kubernetes operator again. Uh, it, it all runs the same way. So I'm going to take all four of these scripts and then install them essentially into the Kubernetes cluster as a config map. And that's what this command will do for us. So let me go ahead and go there and then copy this command. And we will go ahead and install that. So that's been created. So now we can actually go into K9S and if we switch over to look at config maps and let's, let's uh, limit that down to just the K6 demo namespace. Uh, let's see. Oops, uh, let's do this, here we go. All right, so now if we look at the actual contents of the config map, you'll see that these are just simply the scripts all put together into a single, uh, essentially it's, think of it as just a repository for your scripts. Now, ideally you would have a Git operations mindset going with these scripts so that uh, say you go to modify them, you commit that change into uh, GitHub or you know GitLab and then that will trigger a change once you merge it to then update the config map in your Kubernetes cluster. So that way then you're you don't have to worry about config drift so rather than you know directly updating in the config map you just do it this way you you allow that GitOps uh, mentality to go through. Now uh, again as I as I mentioned I'll be using the free forever Grafana cloud. So, you know, of course, if you're a Grafana enterprise customer or something, you can still use this as well, but it's not required. You can use the free uh, cloud offering from Grafana. Now, I won't go into actually how to go and set that up. Uh, it's very simple, just going to grafana.com and you'll see that uh, there are the options there for the free forever cloud option. So once you have that set up, you'll generate an API key, and those are things that you'll need to bring into uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So that's what I have here with these, uh, described here with these commands. So we create a config map that just simply has your remote write URL that you're going to run your, you're going to send your metrics to the, for your Prometheus instance. And then you also will have the, your user ID and your password, which is your API key. So obviously you never want to check those into, commit those into your uh, GitHub account or anything like that. Now I do have that where I'm going to run a local script here, which will install these for me. And that way then I don't have to worry about accidentally leaking out my credentials. Now very, very similar uh, with the Grafana K6 cloud. Uh, you can do the same. You can set up the free uh, account. You know, again, it's just the cost of a email address. And then similar, you'll have your API key and a project ID, and then those are what you'll put into your secret. So again, these, those shortcuts are there. Just complete, fill in the blanks, and then you'll have those. Now, if we go and look here, uh, let's go to uh, config maps again. And let me see, yeah, there we go. So now if I look here, we'll see that, oops, let me go back. There we go, Prometheus config, you'll see the config map, and then I have my personal, uh, well, the uh, remote write URL, and we can see that there should be, let's see, let me switch into this. I'm just looking at our our particular items. 
So there, and then if we go to secrets, then we'll see that those secrets are now there. So here's my, here's those. You won't see them as they are encrypted, just to show that they exist. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and just run a test. Now, the thing that is different when executing a test on the K6 binary versus within Kubernetes is that now with Kubernetes, we'll inject a resource. And that's what the, the, uh, the uh, operator actually looks for. It listens for those additions and then will react upon those. So I have this one here set up for K6 output Grafana Cloud. So this will be the resource that's actually set up or configured to actually output my metrics up to the Grafana cloud. Now, in this case, the, the major pieces are the parallelism. So four here being meaning that there will be four pods that will be created and that will be all running uh, a fair portion of the script. And this section here with the config map tells that look for the test scripts config map and we'll be running this simple.js script in this case. Now here, these are arguments that would be passed along to the actual K6 binary. So in this case, what I'm wanting to do is I have this uh, a tag, which will simply make it easier in my Grafana cloud account. So I create a dashboard and I look for this test ID. And in that way, then I can see each iteration of the tests of tests separately. Um, and that way, then I can easily spot them. Uh, of course, here, this is where I tell the publicly available image so that uh, the, the pods can pull that image when it goes to start them. And these are some links to, this is a standard one just to tell K6 that I do want to output to a promote, Prometheus service. And then this gives the references for the configurations and the secrets. So it's... Uh, all that. So now what I will go ahead and do, and now I have created a script here to uh, just make some uh, easier things for me. And this is uh, just so that uh, it'll update and actually give me the test script name for that test ID. So I'm doing a little replacement thing. So let me go ahead and come in here. All right. And I'm going to use my script again that and I'm going to run the Grafana output cloud. So if I come here and then let me hold on to that for a second and let me switch over to pods so that we can see what's going on as this runs. So I'm going to go ahead and run this resource and again think of this as just simply as a trigger for the, uh, the routine to run. So I've done that. The system's been created in Kubernetes. Now if we look here in the, the pods an initializer pod has been created. So that's now reading the, the actual, the configuration required for the script. And now it goes and creates the pods. So again, remember uh, our parallelism was set to four. So now we have four pods that are being created here. And then we'll see another step here, the starter. So this is actually going to trigger now the launch. So this will actually run. And then again, this was a 10 second test, so this will go pretty quickly, but we can go in here and uh, there they are done already. But uh, if we drill into any of these pods, we'll, we can see the output um, and it's just pretty much the exact same as how we it looked when uh, we ran locally. Now, if you notice here, this particular test only ran three virtual users and there was 584 iterations of that test. So it, it hit the website 584 times. Now if we look here at one of the other pods, we'll see that this pod had three as well. And then we look at pod three, we drill into that, and then that one had two, only used two virtual users and ran through uh, almost 400 tests. So the overall script was requiring that we have 10 virtual users. So by share, uh, fairly distributing the load, we gave three virtual users to two pods and then the remain two each for the remaining two pods. So therefore we had our full 10. Now, if I come back in here and let's go ahead and pop into our Grafana dashboard. So this is the Grafana cloud account and I, I've created two different 
tasks here, or uh, I'm sorry, two different dashboards. So one list the tasks. So here we see that this is the particular test that I had just run. Okay, uh, this it was using the simple JS. So I was doing that, and then I put a timestamp on there just to keep every iteration unique. Uh, and it ran for a total of 1,950 test cases. All right, and then uh, the P95 response time for each one of those requests was uh, 150 milliseconds. So if I drill into this, we can see now too that I've created this dashboard that kind of goes a little bit more in depth into what was happening. Uh, and my, my uh, Grafana Foo, my, my ability to create nice dashboards is not quite there yet, so bear with me. But uh, this will kind of give an idea of how this is working. But if you look here, we'll see that uh, there were, again, 10, 10 active virtual users over the course of the, uh, the test. And then this shows that the request rate was increasing and uh, reached a peak there at 66.1 uh, requests per second. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, switch back over here. Now let's, let's go ahead and just run one of these other tests. So again, uh, what I can do, and I did, I used this script. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me pop it in here. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's go through here and then let's tell it to run instead of simple.js, we'll run doorbuster sale.js. Okay. And then uh, my script will actually replace this and change the name for the test ID. So I don't, I won't worry about that right now. And let's go ahead and change the parallelism to six. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back here. I'm gonna run that same command. Now let me go ahead and show that. Okay, so I'm gonna run the exact same command. We've output or we've updated the output Grafana Cloud YAML. So now we reference a new script. And here we go. Now I do have that script actually going and deleting the previous execution. So that's why it blanked out. And then now it's coming back, and then there's our six pod instances. So again, we could drill into these and see any output that's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh, sleep is not defined. I think there's a problem in my script. There sure is. So I was not importing the, uh, the uh, uh, sleep. Bad me. Here we go. I'm just going to copy this. So let's see. There we go. All right, so let's try that again. Oops. Actually. All right, well. While we're waiting for that, though, we should be able to come here, refresh, and then here was our doorbuster sale, the, the initial run. Um, that doesn't seem correct. So again, my... Uh, oh, there we go. It was a refresh issue there. So that, that test execution was actually 4,908 requests this time. And here our activity looks a little bit more... Uh, interesting in that uh, we had the spike in activity and, and the users and then uh, we started to draw it back down slightly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, uh, show the same thing, but except this time we'll go to the K6 cloud. So the, the K6 cloud has a pretty nice user interface as far as like uh, representing your, your test execution. Now, one caveat, when you are using the free account, uh, we only allow a single instance to be running, unfortunately, uh, because again, typically you would have a single K6 binary that you're running locally and then you would emit to K6 Cloud. Well, this kind of, uh, this fact actually kind of 
works with the Kubernetes version as well. So you're limited to one single instance. So parallelism of one is uh, really the required. So now uh, this one for K6 Cloud uses different credentials and it also uses a different option here. So for the K6 Out, instead of the Prometheus Remote Write, we're using Cloud, which means K6 Cloud. And then we have some different credentials. So otherwise, again, the script is the exact same as what uh, the other one was. So let's go ahead and run this particular script. Now again, if I remember correctly here, this one is K6 Cloud. Oops. There we go. So now we have that. So here, oops, I don't have it. Uh-oh. All right, let me get this out of the way. So if I go to app.k6.io, logged in here. All right, so here's my account that I have with the uh, zero subscriptions. Oh, there we go, look at that. There's the Grafana Cloud. Oh, that one's finally completed. Okay. So for some reason, I guess uh, the quick back-to-back -back execution seems to have uh, caused an issue on the operator at that time. Um, okay, so that's a new one. So now we have the K6 Cloud resource should be out there now as well. Oh, there we go. Now it's picking it up. So creating the container, so here we're having our single pod instance. And here if we look at the K6 Cloud output now, we'll see that it's the test is running. And we can drill into this, and then we should start seeing a, a nice little output as uh, metrics are coming in from my local cluster. There we go. So since that was just a very simple test, it's, uh, I guess, again, too, it's not the, the fanciest output here. But 10 VUs again, uh, let's see, 115 requests per second was the rate for a total of 1,823 requests. So now one of the fun things, too, so if we have both of these free accounts, one nice thing this that we is, have is it connects well, to my, uh, we have my K6 account in K6 Cloud, and we'll actually use that as a data source. So now if we look here, we'll see that here is my execution of the simple JS that I had just run. And we'll see here. And then we can drill into this and then have a bit better of a uh, dashboard experience than what I was able to create personally. So your, your mileage may vary, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of uh, one of the nice things. So again, that just strictly pulls data directly from the K6 cloud to render the view inside of Grafana. So that, that way then you can have your uh, test results right there alongside your observability toolkit. So that's really all I had for the demonstration. So now if we come back here, Let's get back to, say, let me, this. Okay, so if we go back to finish here, now where do we go from here? So really everyone now really has the ability in your observability to go and set up your golden signals. These are the things that you should always be watching. You should have watching for your latencies. So that's your network quality, uh, things like that monitor traffic, uh, special events, those doorbuster sales, you know, making sure that things are operating then and making sure that uh, any exceptions are being discovered or seen. And then uh, to be able to verify your saturation to make sure that uh, you're not, your infrastructure is not under provision for your peak needs. And again, with K6, really it's, we we're looking to improve your reliability. So by 
bringing K6 in pre-production. This way you can make sure that things are working as you would intend. And then post-production, you can still utilize K6 to make sure that everything is still operating as expected. And with that, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm on Twitter and uh, Mastodon is at JavaDucky. Uh, you can reach out on LinkedIn as uh, PA Baylog. And again, the, the, dot, the uh, demonstration files are available on my GitHub repository listed there. So thank you again.